I would like to invite Stephen Cloy and Andreas Walker to come forward at this time. And you've heard these words spoken this morning. You've heard these words sung. You have even seen these words signed. But Andreas, we want to hear the words in Czech as well as in Spanish and in English and in Russian and in Wula. So Stephen, if you would say for us one more time about the body of Christ. Jesus, Tom, el pan y habiendo dado gracias, lo partió y dijo, Tomad, comed, esto es mi cuerpo que por vosotros es partido. And the words for the cup in Czech. A v tomto případě Ježíš vzal pohár, požehnal mu a řekl, toto je nové přikázání, má krev obětovaná pro tebe, udělejte to na mou památku. So a few of my minister colleagues have witnessed and shared a few things about children at the table of communion. And so here are some children's perspectives of communion. You should take communion with a stuffed animal because the children seem to understand that everyone is welcome at the table, human and teddy bears alike. Drink every drop. Do you drink every drop? I noticed this morning at the table, I didn't drink every drop from the cup. I only drank it about halfway. But children say, no, no, you need to drink every drop. It's critical, it's critical to drink every drop, regardless of how many people are behind you. Do not leave the table until you have savored every last moment with Christ. Take a big piece of bread. Why settle for just a little bit of Jesus? <laughs> Dunk the whole piece of bread into the cup. That way all of your sins and your wrongdoings are forgiven. You can even give Jesus a thumbs up when you go to the table saying thanks for a great meal. And lastly, put a piece of bread into your pocket. Seems like a reasonable way about taking Christ with you out into the world. <laughs> Communion is such a simple observance. There's really not much to it. Or is there? Hopefully, communion still overwhelms you with a sense of awe and a sense of wonder. While it might seem like a simple action, its message is profound. It's given to remind us that we are in fellowship with God because of what Christ did on the cross for each of us. Communion reminds us that we had a problem, an insurmountable problem, an eternal problem. Economics couldn't solve the problem. Environmentalists couldn't solve the problem. Philosophers could not solve this problem. But communion reminds us that God loves us and sent a solution. Jesus came to earth to take care of our greatest need, the remedy for our sins. Do you remember being called to the supper table? Did you have to be called more than once? I remember being called to the supper table in our small kitchen. Mom would call everyone to the table, and as we were gathering, she would ask, did you wash your face in your hands? I don't really remember washing my face in my hands before I arrived at the table. I remember having to show my hands in my face, and sometimes getting a closer inspection. And I remember having been sent back to make sure that I would pass inspection. The supper table was a place where we caught up on what was being, what had happened that day and that week. It was a place of planning and a place of communion. We all know the importance of shared meals. We remember those shared meals with family. The dinner table, the supper table, is where we all shared about our times. And we listened to one another. It's where we learned about the family's daily activities and, and even had the appropriate 
table etiquette, I remember my dad reprimanding my cousin Ted when he took the bag of potato chips and instead of just taking a handful of potato chips out of the bag and putting them on his plate, no, my cousin Ted decided to sit with the bag of potato chips in his lap and proceeded to eat the potato chips out of the bag one after the other and my dad gently reprimanding him about that that was not proper etiquette at the table. Yet despite the wonderful experiences that we have at the table, we've kind of lost uh, its importance for many aspects of our lives. We barely even pause to eat at the table anymore, much less share a meal with family and friends. Polls show that families spend less time around the dinner table. We spend more time sitting in the drive throughs waiting on food to be prepared than we do in table fellowship. Communion is defined as an act of sharing intimate fellowship. And that's exactly what the Lord's Supper is. It's an invitation to reenact it, to be a part of a family meal that was hosted by Jesus in the upper room. It was a meal that had been celebrated since the Jews were freed from Israel and from Egypt and with their Holy Spirit passing over the blood mapping the door with the post from his judgment. Paul reminds us about how Jesus defines the symbols, the elements that were part of the Passover meal. They were the basic parts of the common everyday meal. Paul saw that the Lord's Supper didn't hold any greater significance in the lives of these young Christians than the services that they had had and about the sacrifices they had made at the altars of the pagan gods. In Paul's day, sharing table, dining with someone, was the primary social symbol of acceptance, of belonging, and of mutuality. This bread, this bread is the, the body of Christ. And it was the benefit for the disciples, but it was also to our benefit. It was broken that all may share and be in communion. When Jesus took the cup, he spoke of a new covenant. The old covenant allowed for the blood of the animals to be offered to cover personal and corporate sins. But Jesus spoke of remembering the new covenant whenever they drank the wine. It was God coming to the table, to the supper table, coming to share and to be in fellowship with his creation. Different denominations view the Lord's Supper in different ways. Some say we participate in the reenactment as a response, as a commandment. Do this in remembrance of me. Actually, it's an ordinance. We do it to remember Christ. Holy Communion is something we do to help to connect us to God's grace. It's a time when the family gathers together for fellowship. It's a holy moment. It's through the Lord's Supper that we are taking God's grace in a very tangible way. And we should walk away from the table, renewed, refreshed, restored. We forget so many things. We forget what we had for dinner last night. We forget what we wore to church last Sunday. We forget our household chores. We forget to floss after we brush our teeth. Far worse than that, we sometimes forget those basic stories of our favorite family memories. The Corinthians had already forgotten the importance of the Lord's Supper. They were forgetting to examine themselves before partaking of communion. They were partaking in an unworthy manner. They were living selfish lives. They were not living up to their identity, Christians. <coughs> A new covenant people they were, and we are, by living the principles and for a higher calling, to know Christ and to make Christ known. The Apostle Paul is teaching us that when we are invited to the Lord's table, we don't have to be perfect. We just need to be honest with ourselves. Paul teaches us that because there is one loaf, though we are many, but we all partake of one. Monthly, weekly, Christians around the world partake of this sacrament of Holy Communion. Some might use crackers, others use bread. Some use grape juice while others use wine. Some may kneel to receive communion while others sit and fuse. Some may drink the juice from the common cup while others use individual cups. 
Communion proclaims and declares a powerful statement to the world. It is not just a, a passive remembrance, but rather active remembrance, thinking about what Jesus accomplished on the cross for all of us. At the supper table, we take time to actively think about Jesus' suffering, about his sacrifice. And it's at this table that we are his guest and we commune with God. It's our time of fellowship with him. This new covenant was to be an everlasting one, effective for all time. God wasn't going to change his mind. The sign on the airline executive's desk said, Don't bother to agree with me, I've already changed my mind. God is not like that. The Lord's Supper is not an empty ritual for us today. We do it in remembrance of what Jesus did for us. Forgiveness, peace, reconciliation, and access to God through Christ's intercession on our behalf. Sometimes we just take it for granted. Four-year-old Alicia loved church. She loved the singing. She loved the communion service. And one day, while she was at the babysitter's, Alicia was eating her favorite lunch of tacos and apple juice. And the babysitter overheard Alicia doing communion with her lunch. She seemed to have memorized the words pretty well, except when it came to the cup. She was heard to say, and Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and he gave thanks for it and he said, fill it up with folders and wake them up. <laughs> Maybe today on World Communion Sunday, we need a greater awareness of the significance of this service. Maybe we need to fill it up and wake up. World Communion Sunday began in 1936, and it's grown into an international ecumenical celebration of Christian unity. The idea was to build unity among all Christians, stressing their interconnectedness to Jesus Christ. The key word for today is communion, or unity. Community. It is the day when we mark the universal Christian practice of breaking bread with one another and remembering both the night of Jesus' betrayal when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper as a lasting remembrance of his sacrifice. And though we live in different countries around the world and speak different languages, we are one family, one body, one in Christ Jesus. Our sharing of this common loaf and this common meal, says Paul, signifies our unity in Christ above all. And that's what today is all about, Worldwide Communion Sunday. And yet we seem to have problems with this. It's hard to wrap our mind around it, around this God-sized vision of a world where all humanity is one people, peaceful and united. We struggle sometimes to remember that God is God of all. God of the Coptic Christians of Ethiopia, of the Catholics in Rome, the Baptists down the street, men and women and children all around the world. And on this day, we celebrate God in the big picture as we join with Christians of every place, every tribe, every race, and every continent gathered at the supper table. Oh, it might be called the Eucharist, it might be called the love feast, Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper. Today, Presbyterians, Methodists, Catholics, Lutherans, Pentecostal, Baptists, and thousands of other denominations, and even those without denominations, will take this sacrament, the supper table of communion. The bread is given to people that could overeat all day, as well as to people who have no idea where their next meal is coming from. It's all about community. World Communion Sunday is on the Christian calendar for a reason. It can and it should be the entry point to an, an international perspective that connects Christians globally in bonds of love and justice. There's important work to be done in areas of cultural understanding and mission. <coughs> Communion defines us who we are as believers. Communion focuses us on Jesus, who is the center of our identity. We are the people of Jesus who celebrate and are thankful for his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. This day, as we gather at the supper table, may we be the spark that creates this ongoing global concern in our church and all congregations. 
This is the day and this is the way that calls us back to celebrate these words. In remembrance of me, the new covenant, this supper table calls us to a different way of living, a way that rises above all hatred and divisions, a way of peace and unity, a way of grace and love that reflects in the very love and life of Christ Jesus himself. This shared meal, this supper table that we share today with Christians all around the world, shapes us, unites us as one in the body of Christ. Amen.